Okay, so something I have in my videos that I don't really talk a lot about is this keyboard, which um, kind of shows up every now and then. I haven't really made a video or talked about it because it's a custom keyboard, but I might as well talk about it now. Now this is called the GK64, and I got the box, but you're gonna get the bottom plate as well as the PCB, that top plate, and the cable. Now the case is a big piece of aluminum that's been machined all the way through with a little bit of detailing, as you can kind of see on the side, makes it have a little bit of detail, makes it easy to pick up actually. Now if we move over to the back, you'll notice it also has some more details. This actually makes it also easier to pick up from the top and the bottom. It also comes with some rubber feet that you have to stick on yourself. And here's the hole for the USB-C input. So here's the top plate itself. It is also made of metal and you do get little stabilizers for your keycaps. They're not the best stabilizers in the world, but they will work. Something I did notice was I got some space bar rattle and that came from this little bar over here making the, um, the two sides uneven. So I bent it a little to help reduce it, but you know, it's still not the best. These aren't the best stabilizers, so just keep that in mind. And here's the PCB itself. It already has LEDs built in, so you don't gotta worry about soldering those on at all. Now something special about this is that it allows you to hot swap your switches and you can change out your switches in case one breaks or you just want to try a different feel. Now the thing runs on USB-C but it mostly works with USB-A to USB-C cables and very specific USB-C to USB-C cables. Plugging it in you get to see it's beautiful color combinations which you can adjust and change in its software but I never had a really big need of it so I never used it. Like don't get me wrong the software looks pretty good but it doesn't work very well functionally it's a little confusing so if you're someone who likes using macros or likes to um, reprogram their keyboard yeah you know, you're gonna have a little bit of trouble just trying to figure it out but once you get it you get it from what I hear but I never needed to learn how to get it. Now my keyboard came pre-assembled but if you had to put it together all you gotta do is take your top plate and screw it onto your uh PCB and then once that's over you just just take the pieces and stick it into the case making sure to align the USB port with a little hole on the plate itself and then you screw that part in and once that's over you plug it in and boom bada bing bada bada boom back it's all good to go but you still gonna need some switches which I have conveniently these are the Kea Kalua bronze switches which I had from uh, Mastrop a long time ago these are tactile speed switches, so they're going to have a little tactile bump as well as a short actuation point. Therefore, you just got to press it down just a little bit to make it activate, but the bump will help you um, have less mispresses. Now, before you put them into your uh, PCB, make sure your little contact points are straight. So then once that's good, you just take them and slap them in. All you got to do is take them, make sure they're nicely aligned, and click it in. That's about it. Here we have them all nicely placed in, but if you don't want them or you just want to take out a specific one that might be broken or something, you can take the switch remover that this keyboard came with and just clamp the top and the bottom of the switch and just pull it out. Once that's done, you just take another one and put it in. Now you may notice that these switches have translucent tops which allows light to pass through so you get this beautiful RGB effect in its full form, especially in the dark. Not every switch has a translucent top so do keep that in mind when you're buying. Now my keyboard also came with its own keycaps which has little um, secondary function markings but it does reveal the problem of the 2U shift key which shifts this entire row over a little bit so your fingers got to relearn a little bit. The keycaps are also non-translucent so you're not going to get any of the lettering lit up or anything. You're not going to get the full RGB experience. For me that's not much of a problem but if you really like that do keep that in mind. That said I did end up buying a different keycap set though most keycap sets don't come with a 2U shift key so I had to improvise with a plus key and there weren't enough modifiers that were one unit so I had to use an extra keycap I had lying around that I like a lot. Once all the keycaps are put on, I think it looks pretty spiffy despite all the little uh, changes we had to make to make it all work. Now the main reason I picked this set is because it's an SA set, so it's going to be a sculpted and feels better to type in. Also it's thicker and has a deeper sound, as you can hear here. Something I don't see nearly enough on YouTube is um, putting foam inside your keyboard, which people do in forums and stuff. This helps um, dampen the reverberations that you get when you're typing down on your keyboard. The sound difference is very minimal, but I thought it was worth showing this in case you don't like the reverb sounds when you're typing.
So yeah, the foam does make a tiny bit of a difference, but if you notice it, you will notice it in person for sure. One final completely optional mod I've done is added a magnetic cable. So I bought two of these cables so I can have one for home, one on the go. So that way I can just plug it in magnetically. And if I just want to take it with me, I just pull it apart really easily and back it up. And yeah, this is my current favorite keyboard right now. If I had a chance to buy it again, would I buy it? I'd probably pick a different one because this was my entrance into the whole mechanical custom keyboard world. I'd probably pick, I, don't, I wouldn't know if I would pick something bigger or smaller, but I know I would pick something with not a 2U shift key over here, so that way I don't have to like relearn how to do it. But after I got it, it, was, it wasn't so bad, but you know, that's that's just a forewarning in case you decide to get this keyboard. You will have a little trouble in the beginning trying to, you know, get your fingers used to the slightly changed layout, but it doesn't take any longer than maybe like a week or two. When it comes to recommendations for custom keyboards, it's a little bit hard to recommend just because of the sheer price of them. Like this keyboard was really expensive. Um, considering what I get and it's like um, I think I paid 150 or so for like just the case at the PCB I paid maybe 20 bucks for the switches and then another hundred on top for the keycaps because um, These keycaps come with like full-size layout stuff But you know, I, I just needed these amounts But I still have to pay the full hundred unless you can find yourself like a cheap batch that only has like the amount of keys you need but these are SA keycaps, which tend to be really expensive if you want the good ones. I also paid a few bucks for that one over here and 24 bucks for this guy. Anyway, this thing cost me well over $200. <laughs> 200 to, between 200 to $300 for um, this build if I consider all the upgrades I did to it. But personally to me, I think it's worth it just because um, this is an item I use every day. So I'm the kind of person who likes to um, spend on the things that he uses every day. Like if I'm going to use a specific item all the time, I want it to be nice. So if it's gonna be my keyboard, I want it to be a really nice keyboard that I'm probably never gonna to have to replace in a long, long time. That said, sometimes I see a cool keyboard and I'm like, man, it'd be nice to have that. But I think that's why that whole custom mechanical keyboard market exists because there's just so many things you can try out and use before you figure out what you really like. Like with this, I'm pretty damn close, but if I end up working in an office situation, I'm probably gonna need something with like a number pad or something like that. And I have no just the one, which I, kind of want to get my hands on but um it's expensive all right that's about it for this guy over here this has been technical i hope this helps i'm not going to throw this it's too expensive it would probably break the camera and the floor <laughs>